Okay, powering up. This week on The Aviators, I head back into the airline simulator, but this time with only one engine, and the results aren't so pretty. And I think I've lost my runway. We look at Marine Corps aviation in Miramar, California, home of the third Marine Air Wing. And Curtis finds out what it's like to be a Marine FA-18 pilot. engine failure to try and come back to the airports but you are a little bit low and I think I've lost my runway yes we're back in the simulator last week we saw a kid take to the controls of the horizon Boeing 737 simulator we're almost on the ground this week I'm going to try my hand at landing the simulated 737 but things are going to be a little tougher for me Shortly after takeoff, we're going to lose an engine. Now, I'm an IFR-rated private pilot, but I am not a multi-engine pilot. I've had absolutely no multi-engine training. I have no idea what to expect. But we have Slavko here from Horizon Aviation that's going to help me through this situation and hopefully bring us down to the ground safely once again. For this challenge, we're back in the Horizon 737 simulator. I'll be starting with the jet on the runway. Unfortunately for me, I have no idea when I'm going to lose an engine. And having no multi-engine experience, to me, everything is new. On the ground, ready to go. Okay, powering up. Good stuff. And we're gonna keep that one hand there until V1. You're gonna control on the ground with your feet, exactly like you're doing. Unbeknownst to me, this challenge is starting a lot sooner than expected. And V1, rotate. So you start pulling back. You've lost your number two engine. Already. The engine power is coming back. The engine has failed. Just as we pass through 140 knots, the number two or right engine fails. At this speed, we're past the point where I could abort the takeoff, and my only option is to pull up, come around, and land again back at LAX. To compensate for the right engine out, I'm having to apply full left rudder to keep the aircraft moving straight. Yeah, it does feel kind of lopsided. I'm trying to keep it level and compensating one way turns me another way. It's, 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 it's hard to explain. It's yeah. just, it's not, uh, it's certainly out of the ordinary, definitely. To turn to the right, all I have to do is let off the left rudder a little bit and the aircraft will start to turn itself. I've had to climb to 3,000 feet to complete the circuit. I'll be doing a complete circuit and landing back on the runway I took off from. Although ahead of us I'm seeing another airport, Slavko is telling me I'm not out of the woods yet. You know, I'm looking out the window, and is am I uh, supposed to be going slightly to the right? Uh, no, actually, well, yeah, you want to be on a heading of right. 070. Right now we're in 060. Okay, so, so... just a little bit to the right. And LAX, the airport, is just a beam. It's our, sort of at our 90... Oh, okay. 90 degree here. All right, because I'm seeing something ahead of us, but I, I guess that that's is, not the uh, airport. That is another airport, actually. Oh, well, that works us. for me, but I guess we're going to LAX. It is, yeah. We're <laughs> going to go back. That's where our maintenance is, and that's where we're... If we had a fire or something a little bit more severe, then we would maybe divert... Oh, so you're saying this isn't severe airport. enough? No, an engine failure <laughs> is actually uh, pretty standard training. It's well, not standard Well, I beg to differ. <laughs> While I'm certainly not enjoying this, Slavko is right. Airline pilots undergo simulator training for this exact sort of procedure approximately every six months. For me, having to do the circuit is giving me a lot of practice balancing out flying on one engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try a turn. Uh, so I'll command it here on your flight directors and you're still flying the airplane, the autopilot isn't on. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make a left turn. We're gonna try and come back to the airport. So we're gonna left uh, go left to a heading of 200. And it's a climbing left, I'm still climbing. Yeah, here, you're still climbing because right? we still want to try to get up to 3,000 feet for the circuit. Thankfully, after a final left turn, I can see the runway. 
I'm using the ILS to help me land and intercepted the localizer. Just when I think this is beginning to look like something I'm used to, Slavko gives me some unfortunate news. So this is where it gets tricky because now we're going to slow the airplane down to the final approach speed. Wait a second, this is where it gets tricky? Yeah. <laughs> so the final approach speed is actually going to be about 140 knots. Oh. And so we're going to slow the airplane down, we're going to configure the flaps. Flaps for landing aren't going to exceed 25, where normally we would be at 30 or 40. My flaps are set for landing, I'm slowing, and I'm right on the proper speed to land. But I'm left of the runway and am descending too quickly. And yeah, I'm gonna, looks like if I keep this up, I'm gonna be short of the runway. I'm gonna give you a little bit of power. But you see now, I gave you a little bit of power, the airplane started giving me a little bit of a turn. Yeah, yeah, I see it's pushing me the other way. But you are a little bit low, so we're gonna have to help you out there. Unfortunately, adding power has pushed me further off course, and I'm still descending too quickly. Oh yeah, very low to the ground. You see, and I think I've lost my runway. You have. Oh. And. Uh oh. There's the ground. Well, we're on the ground. <laughs> That's good. Well, the airplane's on the ground, just not on the runway. Despite it looking like I've broken the simulator, the likely result would have been damaged landing gear and the aircraft skidding to a halt. The passengers would be okay, but I gotta say, I'm not happy with this result. That was really hard. That was really hard. Um, I think training would be a good thing. So if you want to fly multi-engine and handle an engine out, get trained, absolutely. Uh, that, was, that was really, really tough. It didn't feel at all right. Nothing felt right about that entire flight. It was just wrong from the beginning. So I just had to give this another go around. We'll spare you all the details other than to say it went a lot better the second time around. Before I knew it, I was right back on final. I descended too quickly before and will not allow that to happen again. So you drifted down a little bit, you're a little bit low. It looks rather high uh, to me, but that's not what the glide slope is indicating. The glide slope actually is telling me I'm a little low. But, Just to uh, look at it visually and put yourself down where you think you need to be. Here we go. And use your rudder if you need to give a little bit more. Okay, so I think we're probably going to put the power down soon. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, you can go to idle and then watch what the airplane does. You see it tries uh, to squirrel away from you. So yeah. So now all of a sudden the left rudder is too much being exactly. a problem. Oh look, you got it down on the center line. Well done. Wow, that was, uh, that was really, really hard, but this one was obviously much better than the last one. We came up short from the runway in the last one, and, uh, and we made the runway, and it was much, much better this time around. And you know, it goes to show, I mean, previously, I had absolutely no experience. It didn't make it any less uh, difficult to handle, but at least I, I got to know a little bit more of what to expect and uh, and found myself just a little bit more prepared. It was tough, but finally, second go around, we did it and I'm uh, I'm pretty happy all things considered. Tough as it was, I did have a lot of fun. If you've never flown a simulated 737 before, you really got to check it out.